my homemade Raspberry Pi soil moisture monitor is working really well, but currently it has one major drawback, battery life. And in this video, I'm going to explore programming in deep sleep to power down the device for relatively long periods to conserve energy, only waking every so often to test that soil moisture level. The monitor is based on a Raspberry Pi Pico, and you can see exactly how I made it in another video. And I'll be picking up the programming at the point where that left off, adding deep sleep. So with the Pi Pico in the water monitor plugged into my host computer, I can open up the MicroPython program using Thonny to edit it. Now this is an exact copy of main.py, the program that runs automatically, flashing a red LED five times when the plant is short of water. But I'm going to be messing about with the code, so I want to leave that alone. First of all, I want to speed up the rate at which that LED flashes. So I'm replacing the values of those sleep instructions to 0.5 of a second. And I can immediately test that change by running the code. Now I know we haven't come to deep sleep yet, but I just want to tidy up some of the baggy bits of code so I know what's going on when we do. And one thing I think I can lose immediately is a spare sleep instruction, which really is duplicating that last line and needlessly adding to the interval between the five flashes of the LED. Now is a good time to look at the differences between deep sleep and ordinary sleep. Regular sleep is just a pause in the program, which like here will resume as soon as the time has elapsed. Whereas with deep sleep, many of the functions of the Pi Pico will close down altogether, including obviously the program, which as main.py will relaunch automatically as soon as the sleep is over. But while we're working on the code, I just want to do a save as, as version three, keeping version two with those minor changes. Now. Deep Sleep is actually part of the MicroPython's machine library, so we can copy and paste a similar line from earlier, adding Deep Sleep afterwards. Now I'm going to paste in a print instruction, which I've copied from somewhere else, which will display a message in the shell just before going into Deep Sleep, which will be the next line of code. Now one thing that does remain active during Deep Sleep is the internal clock, so I can specify a duration after which everything will wake up again. For some reason this is set in milliseconds, and for now I've chosen a value which equates to 0.6 of a second. At the moment that value is largely meaningless, because although it goes into deep sleep and wakes up again, our program won't automatically relaunch as we're still connected to the host computer, and we get a red error message to this effect in the shell. But that will all be fine when we're disconnected, and main.py will relaunch as soon as we wake up. The next thing I need is a way of telling whether the monitor is awake or asleep. At the moment the red LED is lit because the soil moisture level is low. But what about when the plant is adequately watered, which hopefully is most of the time. So I'm going to use the onboard green LED, which uses GPIO pin 25 on the Pico. I'd left this little bit of code in from the previous version and I'm just adapting it. So the LED is on when it's awake and goes off just before going to sleep. I want a similar thing to happen with the sensor itself. Currently, it's drawing power continuously from the Pico as it's connected to the 3v3 output pin. So I'm going to have to change that to another pin that I can turn on and off in the same way as the red and the green LEDs. So I'm just adding a new line of code, defining the sensor as attached to pin 27, which is conveniently between the ground pin and the ADC I'm already using for the sensor. Then in exactly the same way as the LEDs, I want to give the sensor a value of one to activate that pin as soon as we wake up, providing the 3.3 voltage to the sensor. Then, just before we go to sleep, in exactly the same way as the green LED, I want to set the sensor's value to zero, switching off the current again. This is not only going to save us quite a bit of power, but with the sensor not on all the time, it won't be constantly leaching any chemicals into the soil. And with the coding altered, I can swap around those cables, switching the sensors positive from the constant 3v3 to the switched pin 27. And when I run the code, you can see that the red light flashes, because we haven't got enough water, and both the green and the red LED on the sensor are both lit, going out when we enter deep sleep. Now this approach to deep sleep is all about timings, and I'm not using any external triggers to wake up again. The duration of deep sleep will always be the same, but at the moment what happens when it's awake will be different depending on the soil moisture status. So I'm just adding an extra bit so that the same amount of time will elapse whether the soil is dry and the voltage is below 500 or wet and it's above. Or more elegantly put, do a bunch of stuff if it's below or else wait around for the same duration if not. 
So here's a summary of what we've done. We've got the Deep Sleep module imported from the machine library. We've got the green onboard LED and the sensor activated only when we're awake. And the duration of consciousness is the same, regardless of the soil moisture status. So just one last test run to make sure that we're completely happy. And it's doing exactly what it should, flashing five times because our poor plant is still short of water, and then going into deep sleep. From which, when it's no longer tethered to our host computer, it will awake and run our program automatically. But to do that, it will need to replace the old main.py program, which we can happily delete knowing that we kept a copy. Not forgetting to close the program on the host computer, we can now disconnect the Pi Pico and start it up by pressing the little button on the LiPo shim using a paperclip. And now we can see deep sleep in action. After the red light flashes five times, we go into deep sleep and then wake again and run the code, which starts automatically. Throughout the video so far, I've rather callously left our pot plant short of water, so we can see what the red light's doing. But now I think it's time to give it a bit of a drink. And in the next wake cycle, our red light stops flashing. But the green LED on the bottom of the board lets us know that the program is still running and our plant is adequately watered. Now we can turn our attention to the duration of the deep sleep. So we need to get back into the code by plugging in the Raspberry Pi Pico again and opening Thonny on the host computer finding our program in the files pane on the left hand side. Now what I want to happen is for our water monitor to be awake for one minute every hour on the hour. Then I can look and see if it needs any attention. First I'm addressing the duration of the wake period, which will be 60 seconds sleep if nothing's happening, or 50 flashes of the LED, half second on, half second off, plus 10 seconds at the end, just to even up the durations. Now we can look at the length of time for the deep sleep. And because we're using milliseconds, we're going to end up with some pretty big numbers. 60,000 would be one minute and 540,000, nine minutes. And we can add a whopping 300,000 for the extra 50 minutes we need to make it up to 59. And making sure everything is saved, we can exit Thonny and disconnect the Pi Pico once again. And I want to turn it off. Again using the button on the bottom of the LiPo shim in readiness for synchronization, which is going to be decidedly low tech. Essentially, me pressing the button as soon as my second hand gets round to the hour. And our program starts automatically, checking if our plant needs water. And after a minute, it goes into deep sleep again, conserving our battery. And we'll wake up in an hour's time and have another check. Testing to see how deep sleep has added to our battery life is equally simplistic. I'm just making sure it's fully charged, disconnecting the cable when the red light of the LiPo shim goes off, and restarting when the hour strikes, or in our case, the cuckoo clock goes off, then leaving it to do its thing, keeping an eye out for when that white light goes off. With the deep sleep, I'm now getting a few days life out of my little 500 milliamp hour battery. But let's see how far we can push this by having some really long dormant periods. And instead of waking up for a minute every hour, I want to try a minute every six hours. So to the 59 minutes I've already got, I want to add another five hours, which is 300 minutes, or 18,000 seconds. And in milliseconds, a further 18 million needs to be added to our existing total, bringing it to 21,540,000 milliseconds. And with the program saved, let's put it to the test. With such long periods of deep sleep, I really need to know when I can check the water. So synchronization is vital. And as before, I'm powering down, ready to restart as soon as the cuckoo pops out for seven o'clock, which will be a good time to check the water, both morning and evening, with a lunchtime check in between. Somewhat unexpectedly, the prolonged deep sleep hasn't improved the running time that much, making me think that the background functions, like the clock, are still using a small but significant amount of power. And that white light on the LiPo shim isn't helping, but I'm not sure if I can turn it off. However, using deep sleep in general is a big improvement on having the program running all the time. The setup I've actually ended up with is a bit of a hybrid, with a power bank connected so I can top up the LiPo battery every so often. And as it cuts out as soon as the LiPo is charged, it's going to last me a good while before it needs recharging itself. So in a roundabout way, I've got what I wanted. A standalone water sensor, not connected to the mains. But perhaps most importantly of all, I've got a clear plan for Watering Monitor 3.0, which will be using the code from this video, but solar panels instead of that power bank. The box and battery will be the same, but only time will tell whether that little battery is up to the job. 
For the battery connection, I'm switching out the Pimeroni LiPo shim for a multi-source charger from Adafruit, which like the shim has a USB input, but also a barrel connector for the solar panel, which I plan to hang on the sunny side of the pot with the moisture monitor and its LiPo battery in the shade. For the Raspberry Pi Pico, I'm upgrading to the wireless version and I plan to see if I can get it to text when the plants need watering. But I'll still have the flashing LED, but plan to use the green one on the board rather than an external red one. Then I can dispense with the whole circuit board, directly soldering an angled header to the Pico for the cables of the sensor, which I also want to upgrade to a capacitive one. Of course I'll be making a video of all of that too, so don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss that or any of the other practical how-to videos.